This next teaching of Jesus is not anything super special in itself, but it does concern something he said which has caused a few people some confusion. So today, I'm going to do what I can to help clear it up. If you're at least a little bit skeptical about the title of this video, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. I really do believe that all the teachings of Jesus are eternally valid. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is a powerful truth which we should not turn loose of easily. Everything we stand for on this channel is in opposition to those people who have tried to replace the teachings of Jesus with their own doctrines. However, what I'm talking about here is a teaching which Jesus himself said was temporary. That's what makes it special. The eternal truth expressed in that teaching includes the fact that the teaching itself was only temporary. I know, it sounds a bit contradictory, doesn't it? But hang in there, and I think you'll see what I mean, and you'll agree with me in the end. What does make this video important is that this temporary teaching of Jesus has been used by quite a few people to challenge things Jesus said which clearly were not temporary. There's a contradiction, but there's a world of difference between rejecting the outdated teaching and rejecting the eternal one. I'll start with the two eternal teachings of Jesus which are under threat by those who wish to keep teaching the temporary one, the one which is the subject of this video. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that you resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. Now this is a wonderful teaching, recognizes a great ideal all over the world, though mostly by people who do not practice it, except in the tiniest possible ways. Jesus went on in that same chapter to tell us to love our enemies. The two passages together have led many Christians to stand in strong opposition to the horrors of war. The movie Hacksaw Ridge tells the true story of Desmond Doss, an American soldier who truly believed in the power of love to conquer, even in the face of the awfulness of war. It's a great tribute to the truth in what Jesus taught about loving our enemies and turning the other cheek. So, that's one of the teachings of Jesus that is under threat. The other one is in both the 10th chapter of Luke and the 10th chapter of Matthew, where Jesus sends his disciples out in pairs to preach on their own in towns all over Israel as part of their training in living by faith. He gives them some special instructions for this particular exercise. Luke records Jesus as saying, Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse, nor scrip, nor shoes. And Matthew records it this way, Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purses nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, but the workman is worthy of his meat. And now we come to the passage which is used to throw both of the others out. In the 22nd chapter of Luke's Gospel, Jesus appears to totally cancel out what he had earlier taught so meticulously. His words are in fact quite shocking to anyone who has heard the famous turn the other cheek teaching. Listen to what he says. When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, did you lack anything? And they said, nothing. Then he said to them, but now he that has a purse, let him take it. And likewise his scrip. And he that has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Wow. What a total turnaround! Could this be the same Jesus who had earlier told them to love their enemies? Before I answer that, I should point out that there was an aspect of Jesus' instructions when he sent his disciples out two by two that also was not absolute. 
During this exercise, where he gave them specific rules for what I would call a faith outreach, they were being asked to face and endure conditions that they did not always endure while traveling around with Jesus. For example, in most situations, they probably did have a change of clothes. You can guess this from something Jesus says later about selling some of their clothes. We know, too, that as a community, they had a common purse, as did the early Christians. But Jesus clearly wanted his disciples to learn that they could live without the purse. And he did this by sending them out for a set period of time without one. They returned from those special times of God's provision rejoicing because they had, through such faith outreaches, discovered firsthand that God was able to meet their needs no matter what the circumstances. But they clearly did not carry swords whether they were engaging in a faith outreach or whether they were relaxing back at the camp with their Lord. His message of love for our enemies was true in all circumstances. So why does Jesus tell them this time to hang on to their purse and to sell some of their clothes, if need be, to get a sword? What some have argued is that Jesus totally reversed everything he had earlier taught. That he was saying, in essence, train up armies now and slaughter your enemies anywhere in the world through so-called just wars. Those who preach this special instruction want us to believe that Jesus was telling his disciples to get jobs and spend their lives working for money. He was supposedly telling his disciples to become rich and powerful, winning the world over to Christianity through wealth and weapons. But hang on, finish the story. First, we discover evidence that the disciples were not such good followers of Jesus, even when he was there with them. They still had not yet fully embraced what Jesus had so clearly taught them about loving their enemies. At this crucial time in their life and in the life of their Lord, they were forced to admit that all along, at least two of them had been hiding a sword, just in case. Jesus graciously overlooks their lack of faith, but he tells them, okay, that will do. Two swords is plenty. So as it happened, there was no need to sell their extra clothes to get another sword. Then, a short time later, when one of them decides to actually use his sword, cutting off someone's ear in an attempt to protect Jesus, or maybe to protect himself, Jesus stops him. He heals the ear, and then he balls out his disciple. Those who live by the sword will also die by the sword, he says. Does this sound like a teaching from someone who has decided to abandon his pacifist, enemy-loving, turn-the-other-cheek position? True, they did have two swords now, but apparently Jesus did not intend for them to use the swords, at least not for such a little thing as someone coming to kill Jesus. He did not need defending. So, why have a sword at all? Well, the best justification that the nations of the world have for making weapons is that it can deter others from making war on them. And this is quite true. Even if you don't use your weapon, if aggressors even think you might hit back, they'll think twice before attacking you. The problem, of course, is that worldly governments don't just buy swords. They fully intend to use them. Whereas it seems that Jesus was instructing his disciples just to carry a couple of swords as a kind of deterrent. But even then, we still have to ask why? They hadn't done it previously. Even if the swords had existed, they'd always been hidden. And this is where the true meaning of the entire passage becomes clear. Study the context. Jesus was about to be arrested and taken away from them, to be tried, tortured, and killed. The Holy Spirit had not yet been poured out the disciples would be entirely without support, spiritual or physical, for the next three days or more. So what does Jesus say? To make it clear, this is only for a limited period of time. How does he tell them that he will come back and rescue them from their need to hide behind a sword after he has completed this momentous task for which he was born? You can read it for yourself right in the next verse. Right after he tells them to get a sword, he says, This that is written must yet be accomplished in me. 
He was numbered among the transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. Do you see it? The things concerning me have an end. They are temporary. What do you suppose that means? And how does that relate to Jesus telling them to keep a couple of swords handy? Jesus tells them that this situation is never going to be repeated again in the entire history of the world. For three days, God himself chose to step back and let the devil have his way, while Jesus himself is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This one heavily prophesied and unique situation when he would be powerless, totally at the mercy of Satan, was only temporary. And his instructions to his disciples for what to do during that brief period of time were also temporary. For the things concerning me have an end. You see why I say that these instructions have now, with the resurrection of Jesus, with the outpouring of God's Spirit on all flesh, you see why those temporary instructions are now outdated? Like I said at the start of this video, it's a rather small issue, which I hope I have now cleared up for any who have puzzled over these words from Jesus. But it does pay to be armed with a fuller understanding of how this passage can be taken out of context to say something that it never really said. It has frequently been used by some proof texters to justify disobedience to all that Jesus said about loving our enemies. Most of the churches in the world teach that it's okay to kill your enemies, as long as you're being led by the government in doing it. I hope what I've said in this video helps a few of you to better understand how important it is for true Christians to truly love our enemies every day and in every circumstance, and to trust God for our financial support as well, no matter how hard times get. Just remember that even though Jesus and his words never change, if the words themselves say that an instruction is temporary, then it's temporary. It's as easy as that, and I'll leave it there. God bless you.